Hey, this is Nick Dierbertis teaching you financial modeling. Today, we're going to be solving the lab exercise on building out a dividend discount model complete with Monte Carlo simulations. So this is part of our lecture series on Monte Carlo simulation. And this is the first lab exercise in the segment. So here we are trying to build out a dividend discount model for this company following the formula. Um, and then we're concerned that the growth rate is misestimated. Um, and so we're going to do a Monte Carlo simulation varying the growth rate. And then the level two exercise is that we're also concerned that the cost of capital is misestimated as well. And so we're going to add that into the Monte Carlo simulation. So let's jump over to Jupyter Notebook to solve this. So the first thing that we need to do is build out the base model. So we need to build a function, which is going to give us the results from the dividend discount model. So um, I'm going to call this dividend discount. Um, and then we have three uh, inputs into this equation, we have the next dividend, we have the cost of capital and the growth rate, and that should yield us the price. So um, we are going to need to take the dividend, uh, the uh, cost of capital, and the growth rate as our inputs. Um, and so that's just going to be uh, the dividend divided by the cost of capital minus the growth rate. <clears throat> so that's the basic model. Uh, and then we can uh, try it out with the numbers given in the problem. Uh, $1, 9%, and 4%. $1, 9%, and 4% and we get a $20 stock price. So that's the output from the baseline model, nice and simple. But again, we're concerned that uh, the growth rate is misestimated here, and so now we want to do a Monte Carlo simulation on it. So for the simulation, uh, we're going to need to import the random modules so that we can draw random numbers from normal distributions. Um, and then, um, I'm going to say that the growth mean is 4% and the growth uh, standard deviation, what did it say over here, 1%. <clears throat> so then we can use uh, random.normalvariate to draw a random number from a normal distribution. So the growth mean and then the growth standard deviation and just double checking the mean comes first, which it does. And we can see that we get random growth rates based upon that. So um, now we have the random growth rate. Now we have to be able to pass that through the model. Um, so we can do growth equals the random dot normal variant. And then we're going to, I'm going to just add up here also the dividend is one dollar the uh, cost of capital is nine percent and so then uh, the price is going to be running the dividend discount on um, that dividend dividend uh, the cost of capital and the growth and then I'm just going to show the price to make sure that this is working. So yes, we can see that we now get different prices each time we run it, which generally are somewhat close to $20 um, and sometimes go well outside that range. So now it looks like we have a single simulation working correctly. So then we can do a loop over the number of iterations that we want to use. Um, 
I'm going to just start it out at 10 and then increase it once everything is working. Um, so then um, I'm going to loop over the number of iterations and I'm going to uh, run the simulation each time and um, I'm going to append the results to a list. So I'm going to append a tuple of both the growth and the price um, so that we can see the two together. So then I run this and now we see uh, that we have each randomly drawn growth rate associated with the price that it leads to. So now we have this simulation running 10 times and we can just change this to run it uh, 10,000 times or however many times we would like. So now that simulation works, I'm going to wrap that up in a function of DDM simulations, which is going to take uh, all these same inputs that we just looked at here. The dividend, cost of capital, growth mean, growth STD, and iterations, um, and return the results at the end. And so then when I call it uh, with the same, then we should see the same result coming out. Well, of course, you know, with the randomness. Okay, and then um, we want to visualize and summarize the resulting probability distribution of the price. So <clears throat> next I'm going to create a data frame from this. So save these results. And then uh, I'm gonna need to import pandas. Run that, um, and then create a data frame from these results. And uh, the then put the columns, and the growth rate is first, and then the uh, price is second. And so now we can see those two things coming into the data frame. Um, so then. Next, we want to visualize the output. Um, so we can take the price column of the data frame and do a histogram on it. Um, and here, well, we only have 10 results right now. I'm gonna up it to 100,000 results, uh, 100,000 or 10,000 results. And now try this again, and let me increase uh, the bin count. Okay, so now we see the resulting probability distribution of the price. Again, that most are around 20, uh, but some are getting up into this 40, 50, 60 range, and some are as low as $10, but the bulk seem to be between 10 and 30. And it looks roughly normal, but it's not uh, normal. We seem to have a shorter tail over here and a longer tail over here. So um, even though the growth itself was a normal distribution, and we can verify that by looking at the growth, uh, the resulting price was not normally distributed. So it just shows how um, you don't necessarily know the output distribution until you take a look at it. So, and then we want to also look at quantiles on this. Um, so I'm going to make a range of every 5% um, and then call quantile on the data frame with those percentiles. And so now we can see the probability distribution of the price as well as the growth rate. Um, and we would also want to style this output. Um, so I'm going to write a styler function. Uh, so a function which takes the data frame and then it returns uh, the styled uh, where the growth 
is going to have uh, percentage formatting. Let's do two decimal places, percent formatting. And the price is going to be dollars, and it's going to have two decimal places. Um, and then here we can do style df, and here make sure to do just head or tail to look at part of the data frame. Otherwise, you're going to get ten thousand rows in the results after you style it. Um, and then I'm going to call it here on the quantile data frame as well. Okay, so now this is all looking good as well. So that's the level one exercise. Um, so coming to level two, now it's saying that um, we want to also look at changing the cost of capital in the simulations because we're also concerned that could be misestimated. Um, and it has a note here about how the model can break down when um, it's an assumption of the dividend discount model that the growth rate should be less than the cost of capital. And once we vary both in the simulations, then we're gonna have some cases which break the model. Uh, so let me first just kind of naively build it out, this part, and then we'll see the issues and then come back and fix them. So I'm gonna go and modify this now so that it can also um, look at the mean and standard deviation of the cost of capital and use those rather than a deterministic one. So it was saying uh, 9 and 2% for the mean and standard deviation. So I'm going to change this to cost capital mean, uh, cost capital STD, uh, 2%. This will also start taking the mean and the uh, standard deviation. And then I'm just going to do the same thing here that I did with the growth. Um, but instead with the cost of capital. Uh, and now that's the same variable that's getting used here. So that should flow all the way through. Um, and then just need to replace these here. And now it should work. Oh, we do want to also add that into the results, the cost of capital, uh, and add that into the columns as well. And also add that into the styler where it's going to have the same uh, format as the growth rate. Okay, let's try this again. And we can see, indeed, now we have the cost of capital randomly in there. Um, and it's affecting the price as well. I mean, these two have very similar growth rates, very different prices due to the cost of capital. So it looks like everything is working correctly. Now let's look at the uh, histogram here. You'll notice it looks really strange. <laughs> um, there's this huge, huge spike here uh, right near zero. And then the axes of this are really, really huge. Uh, they go even really negative. And they go up to a million over here. Um, and that's because uh, if we look at uh, the maximum values in here, we do have a $95,000 price when, uh, or we have a $95,000 price and we also have a negative $29,000 price. So that's definitely indicative that we've violated the assumptions of the dividend discount model. Um, and um, we can kind of look at that. Where is the growth um, greater than the cost of capital? Um, we can see all these cases where the growth is greater than the cost of capital that we're getting really crazy, uh, typically negative prices. And it's when they're really close together. Um, that we're going to get the super large prices. So what we can do is <clears throat> um, modify this a little bit. Um, so after we've drawn the growth and cost of capital, we're basically going to check, is this valid? Um, so I'm going to say um, if growth 
is greater than cost of capital. And then we're just going to skip that one and go on to the next one. So let's see what that does to the results. Um, so I do this check and now we see there are none where the growth is greater than the cost of capital. So that definitely helped. We don't see any negative prices anymore, uh, but we do still see some very large prices. So this has helped. Now we don't have the negative side over here, but we're still going up very large. Um, <clears throat> so we want to modify this condition so that it will also catch when the growth and cost of capital are very close to each other. Um, so whenever the growth is greater than the cost of capital um, minus, let's just say, uh, half percent, um, let's give that a shot. And now we see the largest price in here is 189, which is a lot more reasonable. Um, and now we look at the distribution and it looks pretty much like the distribution did with just varying the growth rate. So there's another good sign. Um, it's still got this long tail to the right and a short tail to the left, um, but nothing in here seems crazy. So now this is looking correct. Um, and we can see that in the distribution as well. We have a fairly reasonable range of prices. So that was everything involved here in the lab exercise. Uh, so thanks for listening, and I'll see you next time.